What if I told you something crazy? 600 years ago, Chinese sailors solved water problems that stumped modern navies until the 1960s. Picture this, 28,000 sailors, open ocean for months, no land anywhere, surrounded by water they can't drink. You'd think they'd all die, right? Wrong. They had a secret. A secret so good that when modern navies found it, they thought they invented it. Comment below if you've wondered this. How did ancient sailors not die of thirst? What you'll learn will shock you. Here's what kept me awake at night. Zheng He's treasure fleets, 1405 to 1433. The biggest naval trips ever. Historical records indicate Zheng He's fleet had about 27 to 28,000 crew members during major voyages. Daily water needs for basic survival would likely be around two to three gallons per person, making water supply a massive challenge. Do the math with me. That's 56,000 to 84,000 gallons every day for months at sea. I got obsessed with this puzzle. How do you keep 28,000 people alive on water? I had to connect clues from old dig sites, engineering, and politics. What you're about to learn will change everything. Sometimes the best solutions come from places you'd never expect. But first, let me show you why this should have been impossible. Here's where this gets crazy. The 1421 trip to the Indian Ocean. 317 ships, 15,000 miles of open water. No fresh water between China and Sri Lanka. Think about your water use today. You drink it, cook with it, clean with it. Now times that by 28,000 people every day for seven months straight. The treasure ships were huge, some over 400 feet long, but even these floating cities couldn't store enough water. The math doesn't work. Here's what blows my mind. European sailors kept dying for 400 more years. They'd ration water so hard that men went crazy from thirst. Whole crews died. But these Chinese fleets, they crossed oceans like it was easy. <laughs> Wait, it gets better. Most people think ancient folks were dumb, limited, couldn't solve big problems. Forget that nonsense. These weren't tiny rafts hoping for luck. These were floating cities with systems that would make cruise ship engineers jealous today. So how did they do the impossible? The answer is tech we totally forgot. Tech so advanced, we didn't catch up for five centuries. But here's the kicker. This next part will mess with your head. Texts from as early as the Han Dynasty mention distillation for alchemy and medicine, and later records describe techniques to separate liquids using heat, showing the concept was well understood long before Zheng He's time. Given the large furnaces aboard these ships used for cooking, it is a plausible and well-supported hypothesis that they adapted them to produce fresh water on a relatively large scale. They had large bronze and iron pots, not just for cooking. These were smart machines with special condensation channels. Dig sites show us these weren't simple pots. They were built for two jobs. Here's how it worked. Fill the pot with seawater, heat it with the furnace, already cooking dinner, water boils, Steam rises, steam hits cool surfaces and turns back into pure water. Collect that clean water. One ship could run multiple setups at once, scaled across hundreds of ships. That meant potentially hundreds, even thousands of gallons of fresh water produced daily. But wait, there's more. European sailors struggled with long voyages for centuries, often with limited water supplies, leading to illnesses and death. While Chinese fleets, according to historical analysis, likely employed more advanced logistical solutions for fresh water, perhaps including thermal distillation. However, this remains a scholarly hypothesis rather than a documented fact. The first modern naval vessel with a built-in desalination system, the USS Nautilus in 1954. They called it revolutionary. But Chinese ships did this 500 years earlier. Think about that. We call it progress. But sometimes progress means finding wisdom we threw away. And this wasn't just boiling water and hoping. The real genius was how they built a complete water system. Now the engineering gets brilliant. These ships weren't just making water from seawater. They ran complete water systems that would impress today's engineers. Level one, distillation. Multiple stations per ship, running all the time during cooking, no extra fuel needed. Level two, rainwater collection. Smart systems to catch and store rain during storms. Every drop mattered. Level three, smart rationing. They knew exactly how much water each person needed and when. No waste, no shortages. Here's what blew my mind. The distilled water was cleaner than most land water back then. Cities had dirty wells, rivers carried disease. But distilled seawater, pure, clean, safe. Let me paint you a picture. The treasure ship Baoshuan, 400 feet long, space for 15 furnaces. Each furnace cooked for hundreds of people 
and made seawater drinkable. We're talking hundreds of gallons daily from one ship. Archaeological research and vessel design studies suggest Ming treasure ships integrated multiple water systems, distillation, rainwater collection, and rationing, to maintain freshwater supplies. While the exact designs remain unknown, these large fleets reflected remarkable logistical sophistication. Today's cruise ships need huge desalination plants, separate systems, extra fuel, complex repairs. The Chinese built it all into existing systems. Brilliant. Here's your aha moment. We think ancient people struggled with basic survival, but these fleets were more advanced in water tech than most modern ships. So if this was so good, why did it vanish? That's where this story gets dark. This part will make you mad. 1433, Emperor Yongle dies. The political support for sea exploration dies with him. The new government guys thought these trips were wasteful, expensive, pointless. They wanted China to look inward, not outward. Following Emperor Yongle's death, later Ming emperors enforced the Hygin, maritime prohibition, policies, restricting overseas voyages. This political decision led to the decline of large-scale naval expeditions and the loss or suppression of shipbuilding knowledge and records. While not destroyed in conflict, much of the naval innovation from this period was effectively abandoned. It's like NASA deciding tomorrow to destroy all rocket tech and make space exploration illegal. That's what happened. The results were instant. Chinese naval power collapsed. Other countries caught up and passed them. European sea dominance started partly because China gave up their huge tech advantage. China didn't lose this technology. They threw it in the trash, and the world forgot it existed. But the story doesn't end there. We had to rediscover what they already knew. Here's a timeline that'll spin your head. Chinese treasure fleets, 1405 to 1433, factory level seawater distillation, modern naval desalination, 1960s. 500 years later, we spent five centuries figuring out what they already knew. The USS Nautilus, launched in 1954, was the first nuclear powered submarine to produce fresh water on board using modern desalination technology. While the Chinese treasure fleets did not have modern desalination systems, they likely employed thermal distillation methods centuries earlier, marking an impressive early example of shipboard water purification. Our modern systems are more efficient, sure. They use less energy, make more water. But the basic idea, converting seawater to drinking water on ships, that's ancient Chinese tech. Here's what gets me. We call it progress. We celebrate our modern wins. But sometimes progress means rediscovering wisdom we threw away. The cost of dumping proven innovations for political reasons? Huge. We could have had 500 more years of sea advancement, 500 more years of tech development. Instead, we started over from zero. Here's what I want you to think about. Right now, what innovations are we throwing away for political reasons? What tech are we dumping because it doesn't fit current thinking? What wisdom are we forgetting because it's not convenient? The Chinese treasure fleets remind us that human creativity has no expiration date. Ancient doesn't mean dumb. Sometimes the most important discoveries aren't about moving forward. They're about remembering what we left behind. If this story amazed you, hit that like button. It tells YouTube that forgotten history matters. Subscribe for more investigations into tech our ancestors mastered that we're still figuring out. Drop a comment. What other old tech do you think was more advanced than we realize? I read every comment. Your ideas shape future videos. Next time someone says ancient people couldn't solve complex problems, you'll know better. Sometimes the best solutions come from unexpected places. And sometimes the biggest tragedy isn't losing knowledge. It's choosing to forget it.